Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Thursday morning, last day of April in uh, 2020, to peace through the Word, uh, in the Word of Jesus Christ. So, good to see you this morning, good to be with you, good to share uh, the peace of Jesus Christ with you as well. And uh, trusting that uh, you're having a good morning wherever you may be uh, this morning. And... Uh, yeah, it's again. It's another beautiful day here in southern Arizona. Uh, we had warm temperatures yesterday. We're going to have them again today. Uh, but I'm ready to go. Uh, I've got uh, the word here. I've also got my coffee with me, and I'm drinking it out of my Concordia University Irvine coffee cup. And uh, so um, I would ask if you can pray for that. I'm going to be. Uh, attempting to work and get my Master's of Arts degree in Theology from Concordia University in Irvine, California. Still have some uh, details to work out, but hopefully that's going to start uh, in June. And uh, so I would appreciate your prayers in that regard. It's going to be a big endeavor. But this morning I'm going to be sharing with you again from Portals of Prayer, um, a daily devotional um, because it's talking about uh, St. Paul is going to be talking about his upcoming uh, death, his upcoming going home to be with Jesus. And, uh, and I learned yesterday uh, that my cousin in uh, Michigan, from where I'm originally from, uh, is dying of cancer. And so I had a wonderful phone conversation with him yesterday. Uh, and we would, and he's got a strong faith in Jesus. He's got a strong faith in the gospel of Jesus. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable that uh, his relationship with Jesus is uh, to the uh, degree that I'm comfortable that, uh, that, uh, he's going to be with Jesus based on his confession. So um, it was a wonderful uh, time. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Well, I'm going to miss him uh, from an emotional standpoint. But on the same token, we both rejoice in the uh, assurance that we will see each other again in the resurrection. So uh, my parting conversation with him was, if I don't see you again here, uh, I'll see you uh, at, at the marriage feast of the Lamb. So uh, that's always a, a, a source of confidence and, and, and encouragement, and that's what St. Paul is going to be talking about this morning uh, through this particular devotional, and hopefully we can find peace in that. So that's my intent. So my brothers and sisters, this morning we do come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> In the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And so the first reading that I want to share with you is going to come from Psalm uh, 11. And uh, it talks about the Lord being in his holy temple. And uh, the Lord is always there. He always tabernacles with us. Um, and that is a wonderful uh, certainty that we have in Jesus Christ, which gives us incredible peace. So listen to the words of the psalmist, if you would, please. Oh, this is so good. Uh, this is so good. He says, In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, Flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. Boy, 
Praise Jesus. Amen. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see. His eyelids test the children of man. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur, sulfur and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Boy, brothers and sisters, that's, that's a source of encouragement because I don't know if you're like me, but when I look around and I see all the, all the violence, all the evil, all the stuff, boy, it, just, it, gets, um, uh, it gets me uh, upset, you know, and that kind of stuff. But, you know, Jesus is going to make it right. He's going to make it right in his time frame. So, praise Jesus. Well, the second reading comes from, it's probably a familiar one to those of you, uh, but it's from Philippians, the Christian church at Philippi. Uh, and it's in Philippians chapter 1, and he starts to talk in verse 17, uh, St. Paul does, about his upcoming uh, homecoming to be with Jesus. And St. Paul uh, incurred a lot of turmoil in his ministry. Uh, it was not an easy road. In fact, Jesus said, um, uh, St. Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, uh, is going to suffer greatly for the gospel. And uh, he did. He did. But, uh, <laughs> but listen to this, uh, and I pray you'll be blessed. St. Paul says, um, he, he, I'm, I'm going to read in, in verse 17. He says, um, The former other people proclaimed Christ out of imprisonment. What then? Uh, excuse me. He says, The former proclaimed Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that I rejoice. St. Paul didn't care if he was in prison or what, so long as he was proclaiming Christ. Boy, what a testimony, right? So whether we're in a pandemic or whatever, as long as we're proclaiming Christ, it's all good, right? <laughs> so he goes, yes, I will rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not, not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or, my, or by death. So listen to this. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which... I shall choose. I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. But he says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. God's word for us this morning, praying that will be a blessing to you. So allow me to unpack this for you, if, if I will, if I can, uh, from portals of prayer on this tremendous biblical truth. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. Um, this is one of uh, a, a very favorite passage of Holy Scripture, and yet it sounds a bit strange, and it does. So what does it mean that to live is Christ? And how can we consider it gain to die? I mean, isn't that a dichotomy? Paul wrote these words near the end of his life. He had endured countless trials. He wrote to his beloved Philippians and told them, frankly, that he wanted to be with Jesus. But if he was still needed on this earth for their sake, he would continue to serve. God's will be done. So it may sound strange to be ready to die, but Paul knew exactly what waited for him. From the grave will Christ recall me. 
brighter scenes will then commence. That's a confidence that we have. So to die and be with Jesus would be a welcome change from the struggles that St. Paul faced below. However, until the Lord chose to take Paul home, his life was focused on one word, Christ. Where is our focus this morning? Salvation was secure and life was guaranteed. What did St. Paul have to fear? So his last days on earth were consumed with the one who gave him eternal life, Christ. Life is only life with Christ. Death is only life with Christ. We don't know when Jesus will return. We don't. We don't know when he will call us home. We don't. But while we are on earth, we can pray that our hearts are centered on Christ, who gives us eternal gain. What a blessing, amen? It really is. So, let me uh, say this brief prayer. Christ, in life, in death, we trust in you. Amen. Praise Jesus for those tremendous words of strength and encouragement. So, brothers and sisters, let's profess the Christian faith uh, that we believe uh, as recorded in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to get ready to uh, pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and then I want to pray. But we've got a lot of people that are chiming in from all over the world. Uh, we've got somebody, a, a good uh, a sister in Christ of mine, that is chiming in over from Singapore uh, in Asia. And what a blessing that is. Uh, we have people from Honduras that are checking in this morning from Central America. We got people down in South America, in Peru, uh, and uh, we may even have some people in Europe. But we got people all over. We got people in Benson, Arizona. Uh, we got people in uh, near uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, a, a very wonderful pastor friend of mine. Uh, so uh, I, I want to say that that this ministry is to be your ministry. Uh, we want to minister to you in the most effective way we can. And so I'd like to be able to hear what's going on wherever you may be so that we can pray intelligently and appropriately for you and maybe even assist you in some form, in some way, in some how, whatever that might be. I don't know. But um, I, I really desire this ministry to be yours. And uh, so... Uh, I would like to hear from you as to what's going on, as to where you are, so that we can hold you up in prayer and, and pray intelligently for that, as well as, I don't know, maybe <laughs> doing something, who knows. Um, but I really love you guys, I really do, and it's such a privilege to share uh, peace and the gospel with you. It just really is, it just thrills me beyond a doubt. So. <laughs> So anyway, let's pray. Enough of me, okay? Let's let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us first, and then I'm going to pray for the church, all right? So, But let's first pray the Lord's Prayer together. So together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, this morning, I want to pray 
for the Church of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I know I've got a couple of pastors that are already chiming in. Uh, I've got a wonderful pastor friend of mine uh, up in uh, uh, near uh, Toronto, Canada. I've got another pastor family of mine in Honduras, uh, Pastor Cuellar. Uh, and uh, I've got, so I want to pray for their ministries. Uh, you know, ministry can be hard. It can be tough. Uh, it can be discouraging. Uh, it can be all those things all at once. <laughs> and so um, I just want to lift these brothers up in prayer. I want to lift up the, the Church of Jesus Christ in prayer. And, uh, and God's doing an incredible work uh, through these wonderful men and, and through you. So, so allow me to please pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can come before you, uh, casting our cares upon you, knowing that you hear and answer our prayers. And it's only because of your grace and mercy that you do that. We have no uh, virtue within ourselves that are deserving of your grace and mercy whatsoever. But so God, uh, with that assurance that we can come to you, I want to lift up your holy church. Father, you've given us the wonderful privilege, the wonderful responsibility as well to share the great news, your gospel. Uh, Jesus Christ crucified and risen for the forgiveness of sins, uh, with no contributions from us whatsoever. What a privilege, what a joy that is to be able to share that with others. God, I want to thank you for these wonderful pastors, these wonderful men that you've called into the ministry to uh, lead your church and to share the gospel with people. God, I pray that you would encourage them as only you can. God, I, I, I know that there are uh, tough times that they're going through. Some of them have personal challenges that are astounding, and yet they still minister your word. Uh, God, please, please uh, intervene in their lives, strengthen them. Uh, re I, I pray that you might alleviate the burdens that they're carrying. I pray if they're health burdens, if they're financial burdens, if they're relationship burdens, whatever it might be, God, please give them the... the uh, extra zip in their step, the, the, the peace and the comfort that they need and the alleviation of the difficulties, if that would be your will as well. And Father, bless their ministries, prosper them in all aspects so that your kingdom is expanded and your word goes out uh, in abundance. So Father, protect your church also from the evil forces that want to try to thwart your, your ministry and the furtherance of your kingdom. So we ask this, Lord, in your precious and holy name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you, for into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, what a privilege it was to share the good news of Jesus Christ with you this morning. Just a quick announcement. Tomorrow, uh, it may be a little late. Uh, I have an appointment with uh, a automobile dealership to get some service done. I may try to do it virtual. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But our time together tomorrow, uh, peace uh, through the word, may be a little late. So um, uh, I, I, I mentioned that to you. But go in God's grace and mercy. Serve him this, to this day uh, as he gives you those wonderful opportunities. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow at Peace Through the Word. Amen.